Hey y'all, this Battle Means by Omari back at you with another video. Alright, so I made a post yesterday on uh, Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram about something that I noticed in 100 Time Years Skip Goku or End of GT Goku, whatever you want to call him. And yeah, it's something that I noticed. He's lacking a tail. Something that was so, like, such a big part of GT. End of GT Goku doesn't have one. And I find that a bit strange as to why he wouldn't have his tail when it's the key to his most powerful transformation. Now, we all know originally, Goku's tail was a big part of him. It was, you know, it was what made him feel powerful. And it was also weakness at the time because you know, it would get in the way and whenever someone grabs it, it, it makes you sleepy, it makes you weak. And then in GT, they wrap his most powerful transformation back into what's what was really important in the Saiyan heritage, the tail. It's the key to Super Saiyan 4. And then what the guy went through to get it back in GT, having to pull that thing back out through the spine was very, very like, it was, it was, it was a lot. It took a lot for him to get it. And it made him gain Super Saiyan 4, in which he had to achieve through the Golden Uzaru and controlling that power. Same thing with Vegeta. He had to get his tail back too, but unfortunately he was an adult. So he needed Boma to bring his tail back through the uh, Bolt Blood machine. And he was able to get his tail back and go Super Saiyan 4 as well. Yet at the end of GT, he doesn't have it. It's not there why is that why did they get rid of his tail okay first i want to get into what exactly end of gt goku is now when goku you know nullified um omega's mega karma ball minus energy ball goku was done he wasn't dead but he was done there was nothing more he could do he made a pact with shenlong to let Tim come back, give like completely revive his energy so that he can beat Omega in exchange for an agreement that he would take on a certain responsibility. Now, after he beat Shen uh, Omega, Goku was dead and Shenlong revived him. And by the time that Shenlong revived him, Goku was already in another plane of existence. Evidence of that is when Pan picked up his shirt, his gi, off the ground and we clearly see Goku wearing that gi. So by the time that he's revived by Shenlong, Goku is already quote unquote a god. He's able to just go down to hell and see Piccolo. Even Piccolo was shocked to see him. You know, don't uh, previously the only way Goku could have gotten to hell was through a warp hole. Also that handshake that he gave with Piccolo that had the aura around it, I believe that that has a significant meaning to it because Goku's now taking on a responsibility involving the Dragon Balls, which is previously the Namekians responsibility, you know, watching over the Dragon Balls. So I believe that that handshake has something to do with it. Also, both Piccolo and Roshi and Vegeta all knew something was different about Goku. He just wasn't his normal Goku because they're acting like, are you? They can see something is wrong or different. Now we have to think about where Goku went. Now, he definitely went somewhere because he asked Shenlong to stop off on these places on his way there, meaning that they're going somewhere. And we then see Goku merge with the Dragon Balls, not Shenlong himself, but the balls. Now, there's a lot of speculation on what happened in this ending, which makes it so cool. You know, you come up with your own ending, your own theories. It's mysterious. And, you know, that's a pretty cool thing about it. Dragon Ball doesn't have too much mysterious stuff going on, which makes this ending so unique. Now, think about it. Goku was able to show up and tell Goku Jr. why the Dragon Balls weren't working. I mean, he was just able to appear out of nowhere. Now, Goku being merged with Shenlong, that wouldn't work. Goku becoming the dragon wouldn't work because he wouldn't just be able to appear like that. So I do not believe Goku is merged with Shenlong. I do believe Shenlong would still appear if you gather all seven Dragon Balls. And Goku was there the entire time watching over Goku Jr. 
uh, even says, you know, that you're strong. I been, haven't been that wound up for a long time. So he was literally there watching him, which is pretty awesome. I mean, if you haven't seen this special, you need to watch it. I mean, don't go in there looking for huge explosions and Kamehamehas and, and you know, power ups everywhere. Go into it for the story and you you will love this movie. It's one of my favorites. But like everything else, GT, watch the Japanese subs. So, you know, later on we see Goku again at the tournament. Now, this begs the question, why doesn't Goku have his tail? I believe that Goku was sent somewhere that I, I do not know where. I would say a dragon realm of some sort, according to Toyotaro from Dragon Ball AF, that makes sense. He's in some sort of realm where he can control the amount of minus energy that goes into the Dragon Ball, where, you know, he can hit the dragons at bay without them ever coming back into our realm. That's the responsibility that Goku was given. Now, why he does not have a tail, that could be that he's so powerful now that he doesn't need it. That could be one reason, that he's so powerful that he does not need Super Saiyan 4, let alone probably wouldn't even need Super Saiyan anymore. And I also believe that he's not allowed to come back to our world to fight off bad guys. He's not allowed to interfere with stuff like that anymore. His only responsibility is to take care of the Dragon Balls to make sure that the minus energy never takes over again. Now, that's one thing. Another thing could be that he does have his tail is just tucked underneath his gi somewhere. That could be his, that 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 could be what it is too. But why he would tuck it, you know, that really wouldn't make sense. And another thing could be is that one of the requirements for him to take on the job was for him to get rid of the tail because regardless of him being able to go Super Saiyan 4, it's still a destructive force because if he sees a moon, he will turn into the Uzaru. So that could be something that was a requirement because he can. there's a chance he'll lose control and they can't risk that wherever he is. So yeah, I mean, it's, it's a lot of possibilities. He could have also lost it in a fight, who knows? <laughs> I mean, but the fact of the matter is the fact that he doesn't have a tail is a big detail that they put in there that a lot of people look over. So, as I said before, he's definitely achieved a different, a higher plane of existence where he can skip dimensions whenever he wants. And, you know, it, him not having that tail is part of that, I think. It was a major part of GT. Him having that tail was a major part. So for them not to put it there, it's, it's, it's something going on behind that. Even in one of the endings, he had his tail as an adult. So, yeah, let me know what y'all think about that. I just think it's a very uh, interesting detail that he didn't have it. And, yeah, I want to know what y'all insight is on that. And I'll see you on the next video. All right.